Today we're talking about what we've learned in 2020 and what do we want to do in 2021. If this interests you, stick around and let's get into it. Hello, I'm Veronica and welcome back to The Wholeness Shift. If this is your first time here, welcome. I teach people about easy, practical spirituality and intentional living, and I help you to navigate your spiritual awakening. So if this is something that interests you, hit the subscribe button below. I wouldn't want you to miss out on anything good. So 2020 was a difficult year for all of us. We didn't see it coming, but I don't know that it was completely unuseful. The solitude that we were forced to have and the slowing down of our lives, I think it benefited everybody in one way or another. I think it pulled us out of the rat race to some extent. It helped us to be more introspective. It helped us to think about what's really important and to decide what we really do see as a benefit in our lives versus what we can get rid of, what we really didn't need after all. You know, around this time of year, every year, it's natural for us to start reflecting on exactly what we've learned in the past year and what we would like to accomplish in the coming year. For me, I always like to do this too, not just because it's New Year's, but because my birthday falls shortly after New Year's. It's on January 7th. And so I like to decide what is my next year going to look like. So today I put together just a quick little list of things that I've learned in 2020 and things that I would like to accomplish in 2021. This is by no means an exhaustive list. I have actually quite a long list of things that I want to accomplish and goals I was setting and I have a long list of things that I've learned but I just picked a a couple, a few. I picked seven of each because seven is my favorite number. So (laughs) we're going with seven. Most of these aren't (laughs) life-shattering. They aren't mind-blowing. They're just little things that I learned. And also, a lot of the things aren't new lessons. They're age-old lessons, lessons older than the hills. But the lessons repeat themselves until the lesson is learned, right? So here I am again. (laughs) Number one, I learned that the way that I prefer to live my life actually has a name for it. It's called slow living. I didn't even know that that was a thing. So I googled what the definition of slow living was and Google says, slow living is a lifestyle that emphasizes a slower approach to aspects of everyday life. It has been defined as a movement or action at a relaxed and leisurely pace. And for the last several years. I would say since my my spiritual awakening has started, I had adopted this way of life. I just go at a slower pace. I don't like a lot of hustle and bustle. I don't like a lot of noise. I don't like commotion. I don't like a lot of people in my space. I don't go out and socialize a whole lot. Fred actually lectured me recently and said, you have to at least start your car sometimes. (laughs) It's not good for your car to just sit for months without being moved. And so I went out and started my car. But it's not that I don't go anywhere. I just don't go many places. I'm in my home. I'm chill. If you've heard of Huga, the Scandinavian way of coziness and relaxing and warmth in your home, that's me. That's always been me. That is my lifestyle. And... I have to admit that quarantine didn't actually change a whole lot about my life. (laughs) I've always been this way. And now I just feel a little more validated that right now I can do it without being judged. (laughs) Number two, I was reminded that it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to say, you know, I thought this is what I wanted. It sounded like an awesome idea, and I thought that this was in alignment with what I wanted for my life. But you know what? I don't think it is. And I changed my mind. Just like I did with my house. I had bought that house, and it was awesome. 
and I still miss that house. I mourn that house. However, it was no longer in alignment with my goals and with who I was and with what I wanted to do with my life. And so it was okay for me to say, I changed my mind. Whether that's with a job or with a romantic relationship or with a friendship or with a car or a house or whatever, a hairstyle, (laughs) whatever, you are allowed to say, I don't wanna do this anymore and I changed my mind and back out of it with love. Number three, I learned about Kriyas. And if you haven't seen my video on spontaneous Kriyas, I will link to that. And yeah, I didn't know that that was even a thing or that it existed until this year and now it's my everyday reality. Number four, I learned that star seeds can actually be a mixture of different kinds. Initially, I had been taught by my guides that that you know this time period equals this kind this kind equals this kind and I had noticed that like one of my daughters was seemed to be a mixture of both or of two of them and whatnot and then I started getting some comments in the video of my starseed video and if you haven't seen that I will link to that for you talking about how they're actually both and so I confirmed with Spomi and asked him about it And he said, yes, that's a thing. And I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me? (laughs) And he said, well, you didn't ask. You know, your guides will pretty much tell you on a need to know basis or on a what you're ready to know basis. And because my mind had never been open to that possibility, it wasn't my reality. And so I had never asked about it. So he just didn't tell me. Everything I had asked, he was like, yes, and confirmed those things, but he had never gone a step further. So I actually learned that this year and mind expanded. Number five, I was retaught the heavy lesson that if you are dealing with any other human being, it is inevitable that they will probably hurt you. Even the good ones, even good people can hurt you and can make mistakes and can make really bad decisions and can be disloyal or can act in a hurtful way. That doesn't mean that they're bad people. That doesn't mean that you have to cut them out of your life. But if you're dealing with people, they're gonna hurt you. What's important to remember in those situations is that you have to go on a case by case basis and you don't necessarily have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't have to cut every person out of your life that's hurt you. This is a lesson for you in making sure that you're setting healthy boundaries, that you are setting down the expectation of what behavior you will tolerate, what you won't, what's okay with you, what is not. And if that person seems intent on fixing things and on honoring you, don't cut them out of your life if you don't want to. However, if there are people who are not wanting to change, who are not having any kind of intention of honoring and respecting you more, it's okay to step away in love. Which leads me to number six, that it's okay to remove toxic people from your life. Even if that person is someone really close to you that you love very much, even if that person is your child or your family member, course not your little child your adult child I'm talking about but whether that person's been a friend for many years whether that person is your adult child doesn't matter if they are toxic and they are polluting your life it's okay to make the decision to step away from them in love you can you can love them you just might have to love them from afar that doesn't mean they need a seat at your Thanksgiving table That doesn't mean that they need unlimited access to you anytime that they want. It's okay to set that boundary. And this leads me into number seven. It's not my responsibility to repair bonds that I did not break. That was a heavy one. You know, I am a very nurturing person. I, it can almost 
lean a little even codependent you know I want to make sure everybody's okay I want to make sure that everyone's taken care of I usually put other people's needs before my own most nurses are this way if we're being honest but this year after being hurt really really badly I for the first time had I mean that was the first time I've really been hurt since I've had this spiritual awakening in many years I've had relationships end but I ended them and I've had big life changes, but they were my idea. This was the first time I really got whammied with some hurt. (laughs) And so I just sat with that for a while and I asked to be led and to be shown a healthy perspective on this and how should I handle this. And I was shown what I just talked about, about how just because someone hurts you it doesn't mean that they're a bad person and needs removed from your life you can just change the rules and set some different boundaries and then I was taught that I'm not responsible to repair a bond that I didn't break this is their stuff this is my stuff and that broken bond is not my stuff it's okay to allow people to be responsible for their own stuff let them have it put the ball in their court and then see what they do with it someone who values you and cares about you is going to say i'm so sorry i want to fix this how can i make this better because i love you those who don't really value you won't they won't do anything or they'll gaslight you and try to make you think it's your problem or whatnot So if you choose to allow someone to stay in your life that hurt you, awesome. Set your healthy boundaries. Continue being yourself. Do the work so that you don't end up holding grudges or resentment. That's your stuff. You're responsible for dealing with that stuff. But you don't have to go the extra mile to fix things and to make sure everything's okay with them or make sure they don't do wrong again. That's their stuff allow them to fix the bond allow them to pursue you allow them to make things better okay so now for the 2021 goals i have such a long list i've got to cut it out because (laughs) i have a lot of things i want to accomplish and i don't know that it's all going to happen but you know what all things are possible so um I'm just going to start with seven of them and some are personal and a lot of them are channel related or business related. So we'll see what happens. Number one, reach 10,000 subscribers. (laughs) We are so close. We're so close. Um, Today, I don't know, I think we're at 8,300 and some change maybe. I'll put the number up there, but so close, this little community is growing by leaps and bounds. This time a year ago, I was, I think I was celebrating 1,000 or 2,000 subscribers. So, well, well, number two, I want to launch my first course. I've been working on this course for a little while now, but it's taking way, 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 way longer than I thought it would, and then throw in the mix, um, having to move and everything else it just kind of got put on the back burner but if you remember a few months ago if you follow me on Instagram I had sent out a request for people to fill out a survey about their spiritual awakenings that has to do with the course so more to come on that it's going to be a big deal but this course is going to be um, kind of a mentorship or an all-encompassing awakening academy if you will please don't take my name if you're watching this don't steal my name but um yeah it's going to be a very helpful tool for people who are navigating their spiritual awakenings and i think it's going to help all of us it's going to help all of you it's going to help humanity i'm excited for it number three i want to launch some kind of a digital planner or digital journal that includes a lot of the spirituality aspects Um, You know, like, when are the full moons? When are the new moons? When are things in retrograde versus direct? I want spots for habit trackers to check off all of your intentional living things like meditation and hydration and whatnot. I want a journal, perhaps a dream journal, because I, I talk all the time about dreams and 
So anyways, I'm just bouncing a lot of ideas here, but it was really impressed on my heart just within the last week that this is somewhere I'm going and this is something that you guys are needing and this is what Spirit wants me to do. So look for that sometime this year, hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> Number four, get on a budget and limit my spending. Dear God, <laughs> I need to go watch my own video on a money reset, the getting your together video on money reset. And I will link to that for you if you also have the same problem. Because lately, your girl has been hemorrhaging money. I'm just like, I want it, I want it, I want it, I got it. So yeah, time to rein it in. Number five, start vlogging. In the last month, I would say, I have had a handful of you guys leave me comments or send me messages asking me if I would please start vlogging. That I would start chronicling my daily life to some extent so that you guys can see how I incorporate the different spiritual practices I have into my daily life so that perhaps you guys can meditate with me, so that you can just get an inside look at my life. So, okay, my life is pretty boring, but <laughs> ask and you shall receive. What baby wants, baby gets. So, you guys wanted it, I will start doing that at least a few times and we'll see how everybody reacts. And if you guys are all like, yeah, you're right, your life's boring, please don't do that again. <laughs> then we'll proceed like that. But um, is meditating with me something you guys would like to do? Um, I can certainly film myself meditating. I've thought about making some guided meditations and putting it out there. Um, you guys comment a lot on how sometimes you play my videos just to hear my voice because it's soothing to you so I thought well maybe some guided meditations would be good for them so if that's something you'd be interested in comment below and let me know that and while you're at it hit the subscribe button and the like button if you haven't already number six I need to get back into doing yoga a I just need to get into doing anything I need to get off my butt and get moving <laughs> because I haven't I haven't been doing anything and I've gained since my surgery I'd gotten down to 165 at my lowest and I've gained back 30 pounds 35 pounds yeah this is not okay the other day I hit the 200 pound mark on the scale again I celebrated so big once I dipped below that and got, I know that weight is just a number. It doesn't invalidate me. I'm an awesome human being. Yes, I am. <laughs> but I spent a lot of time, money, and energy, and I was so proud of myself losing that weight and doing all that work. And then in the last year or two, I've just let it go because I've been focusing on other things or I haven't been prioritizing my health and... Um, I know that I feel better when I eat cleaner. I know that I feel better when I'm a little bit lower on the scale. I move better, I breathe better, I feel better, I look better. So I'm setting a goal to start moving more and to start doing yoga and to um, get back into eating a little bit better, cutting out some of the carbs. My gosh, I'm addicted, that's the problem. You know, I've gotten back into getting that sweet tooth. I got a little taste and now it's out of control. So I'm going to do what I can to rein that in and to, I'm not saying you can't ever have it. I'm saying that the way I'm doing it is a little out of balance. <laughs> I need to calm it down. So calm it down, drop a couple of LBs and get moving a little bit more. And last but not least, number seven. This is actually one of the most important ones, I think. I'm going to start focusing way more on intentional living. I've gotten away from that. I rarely make a video on that anymore. And because it's not the most popular topic. However, it's one of the most valuable topics. And so my bad for getting away from that. And I'm going to 
reverse direction and get back on the other timeline because it is so important you guys it may not be as fancy and all the bells and whistles and sequins that like starseed spirit guides pendulums has you see intentional living and you're like mm, merp. however the things you want the communication with your spirit guide the getting good results from your pendulum raising your vibrations that kind of thing it all stems from being intentional with your everyday life creating the environment that is calm peaceful and high vibe putting things in your body that are clean and high vibe putting things in your ears or your eyes in your brain that's clean and high vibe etc 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 so I'm seriously going to get back on the intentional living bandwagon this year and start doing a lot of videos that lend to that because if you want all of those other spiritual things to come out of the oven you got to put the right ingredients in and that all starts with the foundation of being intentional with the way you're living your life so you can expect a lot more of that to come in 2021 okay that wraps up my list of some things that i learned in 2020 as well as some things i would like to accomplish in 2021 so if you have any thoughts on this or any feedback, I would be interested to hear what you have to say. Please leave me a comment below or send me a message. I get so many of them. I know you guys know how to find me. So <laughs> email me, find me on Instagram or Facebook, however you want to do it. Send me a message, leave me a comment. You know I love to hear from you. Okay, I hope you have a wonderful new year. Until next time.